Yes, people, what's going on? Welcome to Adam McCullough TV. We are back and it is official. Wow, pending a medical that Lissandro Martinez is a red. Manchester United have posted in the last half an hour that Man United are delighted to announce the club has reached agreement with Ajax for the transfer of Argentine, Argentina defender Lissandro Martinez subject to medical and players' terms being finalised and to UK visa requirements. Now, we already hear that the players' terms have already been agreed for a long, long time before Manchester United had even agreed a fee with Ajax. So I doubt that will be an issue. He's obviously got to do a medical. I doubt that will be an issue as, you know, he's been, he's been fit, there's been no reports of injuries and all those kind of things. So it looks like Lissandro Martinez is officially a red pending that medical being cleared. And of course, him getting a visa thanks to Brexit and all those kind of things. It's, it's an issue, but... He is obviously an international defender, which means it will be more easier for him to get that visa uh, to become a Manchester United player. So, Lissandro Martinez is officially about to become a red. And Manchester United have tweeted and posted about that agreement. Now, it's believed Manchester United will pay £55 million for the player. 50, 57 million euros, including the solidarity payments, which have to be paid to his previous clubs where he spent his time in the academy, plus 10 million euros in add-ons. And that's a pretty pricey deal, to be totally honest with you. We all kind of felt that a deal, including all those add-ons, would be made for around 40 to 45 million pounds. But it is around 55 million pounds. And Ajax have got a pretty good deal out of it. And Manchester United have got a player that, if we believe reports, um, Eric Ten Hag really, really wanted. He was offered the opportunity to have Paul Torres at the club after he was substantially uh, scouted by Manchester United scouting department. But he wanted Lissandro Martinez. You can understand why. His centre-backs are very, very important to the way that uh, Eric Ten Hag's teams play. They like He likes them to progress up the field. He likes them to, to go high up the pitch with the ball at their feet. We've seen Eric Bailly doing that recently. And Lissandro Martinez coming in is someone that gets Eric Ten Hag's tactics. When you look at some of the players that we've been linked with and that were signing, you know, Frankie de Jong possibly joining the club, if that deal ever gets done, he knows the way Eric Ten Hag works. Christian Eriksen spent some time at Ajax with Eric Ten Hag, although not playing for Ajax at that time. He spent some time with Eric Ten Hag, so he knows how he works. So, so Eric Ten Hag bringing in players that he knows, he can trust, and will, of course, bring... Something new to Manchester United. Now, our centre-back options are quite deep at the moment. We've got Rafael Varane, Eric Bailly, Victor Lindelof, Harry Maguire, and now we've got Lissandro Martinez. We've seen as well Alex Tellers playing at centre-back. That that's not going to happen anymore once Lissandro Martinez into the squad. Now, it looks like he's not going to team up with the team in Australia and he'll probably be available for one of those friendlies either at Old Trafford or in Norway, which is coming up towards the end of the month. But the deal is done, official and now confirmed. Sandro Martinez will join Manchester United on a permanent deal from Ajax, contract until June 2027, with an option for a further season. The official fee is £55 million, and Manchester United have posted. Absolutely buzzing. Now, there's a lot of talk about his height. Now, obviously, in the Premier League, against some strikers, that's going to be a concern. But... It wasn't a problem for him when he came up against Erling Haaland in the Champions League. He absolutely pocketed that boy. So I don't see it being a huge problem for him. His height, that is, being a huge problem for him in the Premier League. He's a physical lad. He likes to tackle. He can read the game. He knows how to play with the ball at his feet. Those things are more important in the modern day game. You know, being able to play football, being a competent footballer. We've seen some defenders at our club mentioning no names that can't pass wind. Do you know what I mean? They, they, they can't move with the ball at their feet. They're very stiff. They turn like a lorry. And Lissandro Martinez coming in, he is a baller. That is for sure. Whether he takes to the Premier League or not remains to be seen. But I don't think his height would be an issue. You know what I mean? I, don't, I just don't think his height would be an issue. He is known as the butcher of Amsterdam because he loves a tackle. He loves a scrap. He loves to chop people up. And I like the sound of that. I can't wait to be chanting Argentina at the top of our voices at Old Trafford again. Now I know in the past, these Argentinians have done us over a little bit. Gabby Hines wanting to go to Liverpool. Carlos Tevez going to City. Marcus Rojo ruining toast. You know, they've done us over a little bit in the past, but it's not an issue. 
I sense Lissandro Martinez will be absolutely fine at Manchester United. Now get your thoughts in the comments below. Someone's commented, where's my voice gone? My voice is absolutely ruined. We've been talking too much. We've been doing too much. We've been drinking too much. We've had too many late nights here in Australia and in Thailand, in Bangkok as well. So yeah, that's where my voice has gone. But get hitting that like button, get commenting, get sharing, get subscribing as we react to the news that Lissandro Martinez is officially a red. Officially a red, pending that medical. But he's been in Manchester for a while, so I wouldn't be surprised if that medical is actually done. This comes on the back of the news that Manchester United signed Christian Eriksen. We obviously have Terrell Malassia already in the squad. Um, so when you consider those things, Manchester United have made three signings. A fullback and a centre-back. Your midfielder. Now, I still think we need two more midfielders, including Frankie de Jong. If Frankie de Jong was to come in, I still think we'd need a number six. Um, for me, you know, McTominay ain't the guy at number six. Fred is a number eight. I think he's a good squad player, but he's a number eight. We haven't got a natural number six in the team. James Garner could potentially play there, but he could possibly go out on loan um, again. So if that happens, Manchester United will need a number six. We've been linked in the press to Ibrahim Sangari more recently as well. Potential talk about us paying his uh, transfer fee and his release clause. But that has been rubbished by a few as well that Manchester United aren't in for him. So whilst we've got three deals done, whilst that Frankie de Jong deal could make it four, I still think Manchester United need a little bit more in terms of the transfers. Do we need an attacker? Cristiano Ronaldo's, Ronaldo could potentially leave. If Cristiano Ronaldo leaves, we need another striker or another attacker anyway, because Anthony Martial is our only striker at the minute. And whilst I would love to see Anthony Martial start every single game, we're going to need competition for him. We're going to need backup for him in case he gets injured. We're going to need a striker. Now, Cristiano Ronaldo being linked with a move to Bayern Munich, being linked with a move to Saudi Arabia in a ridiculous deal. He could still leave the club. He's not come out on, on the pre-season tour, which to me suggests there's an issue there. Because whilst... Um, Eric Ten Hag has said, look, the decision has been made that he's not going to leave Manchester United. If that's the case, then he should be here, right? He should have flown out to Australia and been a part of this team. Now he's not. So to me, it kind of feels like Cristiano Ronaldo is possibly still going to leave Manchester United. Um, now there's been talk about the height. Um, and again, Thomas Healy says, Rio said Martinez is too small. I can't confirm whether Rio said that or not. But I don't believe that's going to... If you can play football, if you can read the game, your height shouldn't be an issue. You know what I mean? Gary Neville was short. I know he's a fullback. Patrice Evra was short. I know he was a fullback. But they used to be half decent in the air, especially Patrice Evra. He had a great leap on him. And also, it's all about timing. Some big, long defenders can't get up for headers. So, in my opinion, I don't think his height would be a major issue for Manchester United. Um, as long as he's ready for the physical battle. And these Argentinian fellas are always ready for a physical battle. Um, so I don't think it will be a huge issue. Um, he's done well in the Champions League as well. So there you go, you know what I mean? Malp says, I wonder if they'll join the squad in Oslo. Fingers crossed because we do need... It'd be rubbish to see them not be involved in a pre-season friendly all the way up to, um, you know, all, all the way up to the first game of the season, which is August the 7th. Is that right? August 7th? Yeah. So if the first game of the season is August the 7th and they don't come out to Australia, that means they wouldn't be a part of a friendly at the very least until the end of July. And that's a week before the season starts. We need to see a bit more now. You've obviously got the benefit of Lissandro Martinez not having to worry about, you know, whether he knows how Ten Hag wants him to play or the manager trusts him or what the manager wants him to do and things like that. So he could come in and as long as he's fit, it's happy days. But... We do need to get them into the squad and involved ASAP. We've got a super chat here about Stockton, from Stockton saying everyone talks about the Young's deferred wages that need sorting out, but no one talks about the various ways of how it can get sorted. That could be in, a, in the way of Manchester United paying more wages to him to kind of appease him. It could be us paying a bigger transfer fee up front so that Barcelona can make that payment to him. Um, there could be many different ways in which Manchester United could, could get that sorted, but... It's also down to Barcelona paying it. They owe him the money. Do you know what I mean? They owe him the money. And I think it's an issue where Frankie de Jong has kind of probably accepted that he's not going to be a Barcelona player anymore, even though he's out on the pre-season tour with him. He's accepted he won't be a Barcelona player anymore. But he's playing hardball. They're playing hardball. 
who's going to blink first, who's going to give up that money first. It will be Barcelona, but it's going to be a matter of time. These lot are running around spending money left, right and centre on all these different players making bids for Bernardo Silva and all that. Do you think that means they're going to keep Frankie de Jong? I don't think there's a chance in how that they keep Frankie de Jong if they're going to be making all those signings. Um, and like Miles says, we could end up in the court of arbitration for sport. Um, hence why de Jong is saying all the right things. Yet, yeah, if it becomes a legal issue, we could see it end up in court and Barcelona owe him the money. But Barcelona are moving mad at the moment. Moving absolutely mad. And if you think Frankie de Jong, even if he wanted to stay at Barcelona a month or two ago, if you think he wants to stay there now, he's mental. Why would you even want to stay there and play for that club after the way they've been treating you? Uh, Ajiro with a super chat. Thank you very much for your comment, bro. It says, big up, Adam. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. I didn't kind of want to read that out. It feels weird, but you got to read out a super chat, innit? Super chat, innit? you got to read it out. <laughs> um, lads shouting. It's going to be hard for you to get in. What do you think of Lissandro Martinez? Don't know a lot about him, but trust the manager. Do you know what I mean? He wanted him. He knows how he plays. Got to trust in the... These two sat together. Nah. Oh, you just... <laughs> oh, sorry. Come on, Joseph. Can you see us? Put your hand back on my thigh and sit down. Yeah. Um, Hello. Yeah. Got to trust. Ten Hag wants him for a reason. Obviously, one of the first players he wanted. So, yeah, trust the manager. Like you said there, you know, we saw what... Um, you just, we've just been watching clips, haven't we? Yeah. Of him against Haaland. Intensive scouting. Yeah. Listen, I'm not going to lie. That's the scouting that I do. Mm. Um, so, yeah, I don't know loads about him, but Eric Ten Hag is the manager that knows what he's doing. So, hopefully, this will be a sign that can sort of get United playing the way that Eric Ten Hag wants to play. Do you like, think he'll be used in DM or centre-back? Centre-back. I think we were saying this the other day, weren't we, at the game? Yeah. Watching United play and watching Maguire and, and oh, I went to a game, have we? Uh, yeah. Sorry. Um, <laughs> Sorry. Even people who didn't go will have seen this. Uh, but this is where I said what I'm about to say. Um in Ten Hag's system, holding the ball and actually keeping it, not playing counter-attacking football, actually holding possession, yeah. your centre-back does way more passing than he does defending, than he does like winning headers. Yeah. So a player that I think he's got the most um, average passes per game of anyone in the Eredivisie, I think a player like that will be able to overcome the fact that you know one in five times he might struggle in the air against someone taller. Most of what he's doing isn't heading, it's passing the ball, controlling the game, and he's obviously brilliant at that. What do you think can happen here now? Because... Um, I don't see a way, personally, that a fully fit Rafael Varane doesn't start for Manchester United. Mm. I just don't see that happening. No. Now people go, oh, he's injury prone. Right? If, if Rafael is fu Rafael Varane is fully fit, if he can get like to a point where you know he's put his injuries behind him, yeah, he comes back into the team mm. or the side, the squad, or whatever. I don't see him getting dropped. So does that mean three at the back with him, Maguire and Martinez, or does that mean Martinez is just? A substitute, mm -hmm. or does it mean Maguire is 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 out of the team? Uh, of I've, those three know, options, joining. of those three options, I think <laughs> Cheers, Maguire Jay. being out of the team is the most <laughs> like, the most <laughs> likely. Um, I think he's saying Maguire. Maguire. But, then, yeah. but then again, there's also the option that a player that is pretty good in a, a, you know in a less difficult league in Lissandro Martinez isn't good enough for the Premier League. Yeah. There's a you know you don't, you don't money. spend 55 million if you think that. Though. No, obviously they don't think that. But we, we've seen plenty of players who you know look at Lukaku. All right, all that, that's, that's do you think the decision to keep to keep Maguire as captain is like one of them where I'm not going to rock the boat, but really you might not start and therefore yeah. you might not be captain. I didn't pick up on this, but I commented about it on my Twitter saying like, oh, he's just sort of sorted the goalkeeper situation. The here's my goalkeeper. Mm. He's sorted the Ronnie situation. Ronnie's not going anywhere. And he sorted the Maguire captain say, Maguire's captain. And people say, actually, look at what he said. There is room for manoeuvre there because he's saying mm. Maguire was captain, he's staying the captain. That doesn't mean he's going to stay the captain forever. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like people say, I don't know. It's like Ronaldo's not for sale, but he's also not here. Yeah. But then again, I think it would be an, an an interesting thing to do to say what he said about Maguire yeah. and then keep him at the club and take the armband off him, even if there's room for manoeuvre. Sort of. No, I mean, I, I, I mean, like, could it be a scenario where he's the captain if he's starting or whatever, but he's not playing like a club Oh yeah, captain. he could do that. Yeah. I thought he meant like he might yeah. still take it off. Him. No, no, no. Sorry, I think, I I think there's, a, well. there's a half decent chance that he doesn't play every week. Yeah. If Lissandra Martinez is as good as mm. Ten Hag obviously thinks he is. Presumably, he won't be starting every week, or maybe there is a potential that we'll, we'll have a sort of three at the back, or Martinez will play. We've gone three at the back here on the back, play at the left of about three. Yeah. Surely, if you spend this money on someone, he's going to be starting off at the beginning. Yeah, he's so then the who's, who's, who do you think start? starting alongside him? Maguire? I think Varane. I think Varane for me. I just cannot get my head around an idea of Rafael Varane not starting for Manchester United. 
Especially if he's fit, innit? Yeah. So, if he's if he's injured, fair enough. And if, if it gets to the point where, you know, six months in he's missed half the games and you know, tonight's got a lot of, I can't rely on you to form a partnership with, mm. with Martinez, I'm gonna have to stick with uh, Maguire. I get that. But I think but certainly initially, you know, if we go into that game against Brian or whatever his first game, Martinez is is, you know, obviously fit. If Rand's fit, then is he gonna go, do you know what, that's my centre back partnership? Mm. I don't know. I just think Whilst we haven't, all of us together haven't seen much of Martinez, yeah. stylistically, who do you think is the best partner for him? Moran, as well? Yeah, I'd say. I so. think even Lindelof is ahead of. I, th- I like Lindelof. I even think Bailly fit is ahead yeah. of Maguire. I don't, maybe, because of the way he brings the ball out of defense. Oh, a very bad was fit, yeah. But, but I think, I actually don't. I think that Martinez and Maguire would be a decent partnership, yeah. stylistically. Because what is, what is Maguire good at? Like, I'm not saying he's the best, but he's great at heading the sure, ball, yeah. obviously. You know that. <laughs> but statistically, he is good at holding the ball. He does pa- make a lot of passes. His passing range is decent for a centre-back. He does bring the ball out well. You know, Again, I'm not saying he's incredible at it, but you look at the stats and he is good at that. Um, so I don't even think that would be a bad partnership, Martinez and Maguire. But like you said, I can't see a world where Varane's fit you know, for any period of Do you reckon of time this kind of start. ends Eric Bailly's career then? I think so. At United, not Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I, think him and, I think him and Jones... And also, if you're Eric Bailly, you know, you, you've got a lot of ability. He's a very good player. I know he's got he's ravaged with injuries, mm. and he's been ravaged with injuries, but he's a very, very good player. And you must be thinking, I can't be fourth choice centre back here. Fifth. Fifth, sorry. Yeah. Fifth. We've got Martinez, Maguire, Varane, and. No, Lundin you're right. Yeah, you're right. Fifth think, choice centre back. That's just, he's too of, good for that. Based off pre season, though, I don't think Maguire's ahead of. Like, if we're basing it on mm. what Ten Hag would have seen. No. If you've seen Eric Bailly pre-season, you think, but you'd then Eric like, who's this guy? Eric Bailly's always been in that second team, hasn't he? That second half team, mm, where he's kind of the reserves. Yeah, but Donny's... The only, the only curiosity with the second start. half team so far was Marcus in the second half team for the um, Melbourne game. Yeah. Where it was like, has he been relegated? But then he was captain one, so you think, is he just doing that as... I'm having one player in there who's got a bit of value. But I think experience, sorry. the idea of playing a Langer in the first team for yeah. one of the games yeah. isn't out of the ordinary. Like he, a Langer ended last season as our first choice left winger. Yeah. So obviously, in an ideal world, you want Rashford at his best there. I yeah. don't think he fancies a Langer. No, I don't think he does necessarily either. But I think it's more telling that Bay has been there both games than that Rashford was for their one of those games because mm. Rashford had a shocking season last is, year. Didn't I know it? this is a bit a very deep question, but is there anything you can do? About all these injury problems with the likes of Varane and Bay, is it just one of those? Bay, I don't think so. Varane has had multiple forty-plus game appearance yeah. seasons in the last five years. He clearly had something that was working at Real Madrid because yeah. early in his career, in his early twenties, he was quite injury prone. He had multiple years where he missed a lot of games. But toward the end of his career at Madrid, he, he played almost every week. We were looking at when we were yeah. in with him. We're like, actually, he's played forty-eight games, forty-nine we, games, whatever. Do you remember? Do you know what I mean? Was it Van Persie and Ferdinand when? Moyes came in. They basically trained by themselves all the time, yeah. didn't they? And then Moyes was like, "No, you're training with us." And then they were just persistent. Yeah, because he didn't know how to manage players. I wonder if in, their, in their old age. Yeah, exactly. He treated everyone the same, which yeah, you kind of get, but then at the same time, you can't do but that. Players no. like if you've got a 33 year old or 32 year old Rio, whatever age yeah. he was, who's obviously had injury issues, and when he plays, he's an absolute Rolls Royce of a defender, and he's being managed. Then you don't do the same thing you do with him with a twenty-one year old yeah. Chris Smalling yeah. or whatever, yeah, yeah, or yeah. Johnny Evans. That's just mental. Yeah. Mm. So I'm thinking maybe maybe Varane hasn't quite had the same system as he had at Madrid last year, or I don't know. There's loads of things it could be. Even maybe the training ground's slightly firmer than Madrid. Like there's loads yeah. of tiny things that we don't. It really doesn't know. help as well when you've. But got, hopefully we can get him back when to you've had every week. in one you one season at United. You've had three managers. Mm, do you yeah. know what I mean? That's I know Carrot was only obviously a few games, but mm. that doesn't help you. Yeah. It no. doesn't do you know what I mean? All. And he could have just been that. Training wasn't working for him. He mm. didn't really fancy things. Maybe he wasn't really injured. At some uh, time. Yeah, and also, you know what I mean, like, because no, a lot of players would have yeah. been doing that. Charlie Brown says, "Let's get the likes up with the super chat." Thank you very much, bro. Yeah, hit that like button. Stockton Fierro says, "Varan flew it in Spanish. Perhaps that could be a factor." Oh, that's an interesting one, isn't it? The does. I mean, towards the end of last season, everything went wrong with, oh, with every, Martin, as with you everyone. Well, yeah. communication, especially mm-hmm. throughout the team, was disgusting, mm-hmm. wasn't it? Do you know what I mean? You yeah. just saw David de Gea and Rafael Varan having all sorts of dramas, mm. Maguire and, and players, it just looked like they just met each other that morning. Yeah. What do you make of the price or do you just not care? I do so care because we're on a limited budget, but in this day and age, it was always going to be around 50 million, wasn't it? it yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like It's United, it's a player Ajax in an ideal world don't want to sell, they also don't need to sell him. 
because mm. they've, they've already sold a few players, haven't they? Is it Graven Birch and is it Graven Birch? Yeah, Graven yeah. Birch. And um, is there someone else I'm missing? The fullback and Ala as well. Ala, thank you. So they don't need to sell this cat, this kid. So it was always going to be, and you go well, fifty-five. All right, that's not that different. Is also, it? that's euros. So it's under no, it's 50 fifty-five million pounds. Is it according to Fabrizio Romano? Okay, the thing so, I saw was fifty-five million. Well, but whatever it, it is, it's again it's around roughly, fifty million. Fifty million um, is it's a lot, but that's what Ben White cost. Exactly, and Ben mm, White is crap. Is just a. a Fine player. He's just a five out of ten. If Ben White was fine, you didn't mean that in an. In no, a, I meant in fine a, in as in like, how's your food? Yeah, it's fine. Yeah. If, ben, ben if Ben White was at United, he'd be our sixth choice. Yeah. Like, he's not as good as everybody. No, is not. this true? Alfredo says Martinez is fluent in English. His mother is Scottish. I don't know. Scottish people aren't fluent. <laughs> I'm wow, joking. I'm joking. How dare you? <laughs> I'm joking. Yeah. Um, um, yeah, I like I like his nick- nickname, the Butcher. He yeah. don't like it though, does he? Does he not? No. Right, Why? Well, don't call he it. He thinks it's a bit aggressive. What's wrong with that? He yeah. likes to be called the tickler. The tickler. <laughs> well, apparently there was there was some quote about him not loving that he's called the Butcher. Oh really? Yeah. I love that, I and like I love it. the fact we can chant Argentina again. Yeah, that's mm. sick. I love that. Yeah, I miss that. Proper moody, that in it. Mm. You know, when someone gets chopped up and you just start chanting wow, Argentina. Yeah, it's a good one. Oh, I didn't. But every Argy's fucked us in a way. Why? Well, go on. Tevez. Um, Remember his old stunt? Right, Tevez. Yeah, who else? I went to Liverpool. Yeah. Kind of wanted to go to Liverpool. Well, yeah. you're forgetting someone. It was very good. Di Thank Maria. you, Di Maria. Oh my God, I forgot about him. <laughs> Di Maria. Marcus Veron. Veron oh. didn't fuck us. He just, yeah, what we, Veron. he just wasn't as good as we thought he'd be. Veron was, you know. I think he, there okay. were times when he was class in, the, in oh, Europe yeah. particularly. Yeah. That game was it Panathinaikos. Yeah, I think so. There's one way he scored a world. He was, mint, in that. He so was mint on his uh, debut, was it against State Switch? On his mm. debut, he was just unreal. It was 2001 we signed him, wasn't it? Yeah, and Roy Keane was like, he's one of the best players I've seen. Mm. And he just pff, didn't have to do it. He was kind of ended up like Lampard, Gerard, Scholes kind of yeah. thing. Yeah, because we moved Scholes further forward, didn't we, to yeah. accommodate Veron? Because he became like. And that didn't work. Ru- was it Rude at the time? Yeah. Rude's partner. How did we win the league? Sign Rude and Veron and finish third? <laughs> it's a, I think it's unreal. a travesty that Rude only won one league yeah, title. Yeah, me too. And no even if, even if you include his, an, an he never won a Champions League as well yeah. with ten years at Real and United. He couldn't have signed it any worse, could he? Because mm. if he'd gone like a few years before, a few years after at either of those clubs, he'd have won. Well, Real Madrid won the Champions League while he was at United. Yeah. Then he leaves, and then United win the Champions League. Was he at Madrid in two thousand and eight? Still, I'm not sure. Either way, yeah, he would have been. It was very close. Madrid. Yeah. And then obviously Madrid go on and win five, and then. But win. even the one title thing's a bit weird, isn't it? United, because that was yeah. that was a time when we used to win titles almost every year. Mm. Yeah. And then that was just that little spell, wasn't it? When mm. Fergie was sort of rejuvenated the team. Yeah. So yeah, he's still. We've had some. We haven't, we haven't had too many bad signings from Holland, though. But I'm mean, not about Dutch players. I'm on about just in general signings from Holland have been. Okay for us. Okay. They haven't been too bad. Rude Van Nistelrooy. Great. Yip Yap Stam. Great. The best ever. Daily Blind wasn't bad. He wasn't bad. Mm. I think we should have kept him longer Maybe. Than, we, mm. than we did. Obviously, he had his. I wish he was 23 shoes. now. I think he'd be great in this sort of team. Play him at left mm. back. Like, Imagine Daily Blind for 10 hours. That's well, he played for 10 hours. Yeah, he did. Didn't um, yeah, but then so again, you go, that's Senag knowing how to handle the play and get the best out of him. Yeah, or is it just the case that the Dutch league is far easier than the Premier League? It might be a bit of both, to be fair. Mm. Um, what do you think about our business so far? Then? If if this was, let's say Frankie de Jong signed, yes. mm-hmm. what kind of gear? And, what would you rate our business out of 10? With Frankie de Jong? With Frankie. Eight. I'd say seven. Yeah. Only I'd because, seven too. only because, yeah, I'm, not gonna, I'm not going to pretend that when you know end of last season, I was like, we need Tyrell Malassia, we need Lissandro Martinez, we need to get Christian Eriksen, and we need to get Frankie De Jong. De Jong, yeah, maybe, but the others, I'd be like, the good signings, but yeah. they weren't the ones that I was like, we've got mm. to get these players. Now, I'm, I'm not saying they can't have great careers at United. They could do, and I hope they do. I'm just saying I'd, I'd be a bit a bit good. We still need like, a bit more, eight possibly in midfield. Yeah. Although, no, I think if so. Garner or Zidane yeah. or Charlie make their way into the squad they could possibly fight for spots we definitely need an attacker because it looks like Ronnie's going to leave so I I think yeah seven's about right the thing I don't get is do you know this sort of and maybe this is the few times Martinez will play CDM for United but as it currently stands we don't have a CDM even as like a plan B CDM Mm -hmm. we there are none in the squad now so I wonder, maybe that, and again, maybe for five games a season, Martinez can play CDM. But you know, there's certain games where... But if everyone's fit, <clears throat> maybe that becomes the option. Yeah, that's what but I'm saying. But I, I just can't see Varane and Bailly ever being fit 
at the same time for long periods. Mm. Maybe Varane will be. Maybe it's unfair, like you said earlier, to link them two together. Yeah. Tom Hutton says, are they going to drop Maguire or Varane for Martinez? Surely he's going to play as a DCM, seeing as we have no one in his position. We kind of answered this before, mm. but I'll ask the lads anyway. Yeah. Pick your back four now. My, my back will four. Will it be a back five or four? My back four, I'll go with. If I had to pick a team <clears throat> for the opening day, Oh, now. The opening day, that's it, yeah. that's different. Yeah, okay then. So you're going who you, who you want to start Right now. Most like, regularly. Okay. Yeah. Most regularly instead, do that. All right. Because I think that's a different answer. All right, and I'm going to upset a lot of people here. But I'll go with Molasso at left back. I'll go with Martinez and I'll go with uh, Varane and I'll go with the low. Uh, the only people you've right upset now. there, I think, are Shaw and Maguire. Yeah, well, like, I, no, but I, I, I know people go Luke Shaw. I think Luke Shaw's got to prove himself again. Mm. I think. I think I would probably say, assuming Martinez can be the player he is in Ajax, or even you know three quarters of that player, I would go Shaw, Martinez, Varane, Dallo. Yeah. I'll go with that one. Yeah. yeah. I just I think Molasi is okay. But I, I want to see a bit more from him. Fair enough. I think he's not. He's been good and he's got certain qualities that I really like, but he's not really penetrated much in the. Final I mean, and to be not, fair, I'm saying Shaw's got to prove himself again. Molasi's so got Malassi, to prove himself yeah. full stop. Yeah. I just feel like Shaw. I'm still carrying that. Anger from last season, with a lot of these. Kyle, Kyle Domo agrees with Joe, though. He says eight out of ten. Yeah, fair um, enough. So that's interesting. Sean Martinez, Varane De Low yeah. says Ryan. Um, John says Man City fans are smiling. Why would they? They've haven't they sold everybody? Yeah, I think I think City needs to need to be a little bit careful, you know, because I think it's easy to underestimate what someone like Sterling can do. Sterling, and Zinchenko very good player. And Jesus and Jesus as well. Backup. They've lost three very very good backup at like. Squad players there. I think it's easier I think said are they, done to replace. Are they them. looking at some of their youngsters they've got coming through as well? Going possibly. Like is it like some Maka team? I don't know much about yeah. City's youngsters. They're going it, okay. These can slot into these. What's the striker? The lap. Yeah, yeah. Whoever he is, he's not Raheem Sterling. No, no. I think right Sterling. Now, I mean, Jesus and Zinchenko definitely. I'm not. If I was a City fan, thankfully I'm not. I wouldn't be that bothered <laughs> about. Thankfully, I love that. Yeah. You can't even accept that if you were a City fan, you would like it. I if I was a City fan, I wouldn't have it. watched us win Champions Leagues and three in a row. And yeah, but you wouldn't know because you'd be a City fan. <laughs> I'd have spent. So if I was a City it. fan, right? So if I was a City fan, fan I'd it. have spent thirty years fuming. So admit that if you were yeah. a City fan, though, you'd love it. No, no I wouldn't. You would because you'd I be a City fan. I wouldn't because yeah, I would by definition, you'd no, no, I wouldn't because I'd still be bitter. I'd still be bitter and angry that I support the smallest club in Manchester. Self-loathing City fan. I would. I'd still have the anger and bitterness that all City fans have. Do you know what I, mean? I don't think I could say anything. To but I think mind. Sterling's. I think he's good, man. I think Steve people are too quick to dismiss him because he misses a few sets. United have the goal at striker. We do have Anthony Martial, don't we? Mm. That's one of the joys. Mm. We've heard he's tearing it up in training. Yeah, yeah man. Yeah. He, Waiting you know. everyone. Yeah, chucking people, spinning people. He's, I mean, he's got the ability, and it's not a question of is he good enough. It's yeah. whether he can do it consistently. So. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? We've that, been here before, so I, I'm, I, I'm going to wait and see. Yeah, me too. And, no, and no, that's not what you were saying earlier, Jay, off camera. No, I'm saying I won't have any criticism of him. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> I met him in a lift, I'll say it on camera. <laughs> I, that's what it takes with me. I met him in a lift, he was, he was nice to us, so I won't yeah. have any criticism he of wasn't, him. He wasn't a dickhead. So yeah, so that's yeah. it. I, and I genuinely do, do like what I mean? him. And I think he's, obviously, he's, he's got brilliant qualities. Yeah, like, yeah. I think he's a, a very good finisher, I think he's a very good dribbler. I still think his movement off the ball, I think his work rate and all that needs to go up, but... If he can do that, if he's willing to do that, because so far he's shown that, he's yeah, exactly. to do that. There's I'm, nothing to stop him pressing. He's physically able to do it, yeah. so hopefully he can. I mean, you know, change his game a little if bit. If you can, I know it's a different league, but he got it didn't the Champions League like where Tanag gets to do some Tadic into this play, going wow, do you know what I mean? Yeah. I know, but we go, but he did that in the Champions League as well. If you can get someone like Andy Martial, yeah. who's got that ability, get him doing what you need him to do. Then yeah, there's a play there, but he's just he's got to do it this season, yeah. because this is I think this is his last season to show that. Yeah, mm. and sometimes you think maybe Tenard can get the best out of everyone, but also it's the case, especially with the manager that's been there for a long time, is they get rid of the players that they can't fix. Yeah. So in two years, we'll know, you know, which of these players were capable of it because it's also be like here how because from what we hear in reports and stuff, like there's a lot of training sessions, training's difficult, mm. all those kind of things, and whilst the manager seems like a guy that has a little bit of fun when the time's right. There's also times where he's very strict, but you know, mm. if you're late, you're late, you're not coming in, yeah. you're getting fined, you're doing press ups when you can see all those kind of things. But that can if you're a player that's a little bit relaxed, mm. then that could maybe rub you up the wrong way. Yeah. Maybe you don't like the way well, you, things you know what I mean? Yeah. And you end up just doing one. You can imagine it, can't you? It can go one of two ways that. One is Ten Hag has brought 
uh, a determination, uh, a sort of rigidity, a professionalism to the club. Mm. But if it all falls apart, it's, you know, Taskmaster Ten Hag turns players against him with unnecessary strictness. Like, I love Taskmaster. It, but it can, yeah, me too. It's, it's, it's so good, isn't it? Yeah. Is it? But, I've I mean, watched that, it. That I think it's the best shot created That trait that Ten Hag has could, could easily be his, his, his demise as well, if people turn against what him. What footballers would you like to see on Taskmaster? Oh, that's a good question. They have five people on. Right? Yeah, five people, and they're doing sort of slightly. Eric Bailly would be great. On slightly task left field. Um, it's not a quiz, but it's kind of like tasks. Well, it's tasks, isn't it? Slightly left field tasks. So sometimes there's like odd shortcuts and tricks and hacks and like right brain thinking stuff. Oh, is that? Yeah. I go with Wamba Saka and like <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, me too. Wamba Saka would be good. Uh, Can you explain why Wamba Saka? <laughs> <laughs> I just think there's something about the kid that do you know what I mean. He'd be good at that sort of thing. Yeah. I think I love Aaron Wambasaka. Does he be a current player? Mm. Um, no, he doesn't. I think Bay would be great. Though. Yeah, Bay would be. Bay would Bay's be cool box office at anything. Because some of it's like draw the biggest circle you can. He'd drive with his hand out of his car, yeah. like, <laughs> yeah. put a bit of chalk on the floor yeah. and do a fucking <laughs> drive in a circle for two hundred miles. Um, yeah, that, I'll take Eric Bayer. That'd be good. Maybe someone. Maybe just someone just a bit older, just a bit like just see what Lee Grant does with it. Lee Grant. Someone who's Lee Grant. In, the, in the autumn of his years, not yeah. just as a player, but... You do realise he's gone, right? He's about 58 years old. You said current player. Does he have played for United? No, Lee Grant's gone, right? Yeah, but he's still a footballer. He's not. Where's he gone? Is he retired? Has he gone? I thought he'd left. Is he still playing? Wait, well, he wasn't playing when he was at United. Mm. He's working in housing now. <laughs> <laughs> he's got a job for the council. Yeah, yeah. It's a really, <laughs> really good job as well. Yeah. On that note, we're going to head out of here. But, um, yeah, man, Martinez is a red, £55 million. Pounds. Bit expensive, but it it's not it? eighty million pound for Maguire, is it? And that might be the saviour in two minutes. Here, Here we go. This is going to go on. If all he was eighty million isn't quid, the expectations would be out. It matters that, doesn't it? Though it does matter. Yeah. The expectations still going to be there. Yeah, but not the same. I think yeah, fifty-five. I think you get away with it a little I just, bit. I just hate the, like he could be criticism. he could be mint for ten games in a row. He'll concede a goal where someone jumps up with him and heads the ball in. And it's going to be all about his height. And, uh, like Vincent Company or John Terry or whoever never, never lost a header. header. Like the, everyone loses headers. People at five foot nine must be really fuming at all this slander, innit? I know. It's, not, it's like average height for a man. And we're at, yeah, we're, yeah. Would you call him a man? <laughs> yeah, he's 24 years old. <laughs> what, would you, what would you call him, a boy? <laughs> it's not about five foot nine. Oh. But, you know. uh, a child. No, I think yeah, it's average height for a man. And yet Listen, we can't all be six guy. foot seven. Oh, I'm not six foot seven. Joel's actually taller than me, yeah. Yeah. Which is deceptive. Um, <laughs> in the very least. I don't think that's deceptive. I think everyone thinks I'm taller than you. And no, they don't. Do you think you? Do you You're think a people... bigger lad than me, but because people, a lot more people have seen me outside games. Yeah, that's true. So they think, so they know I'm tall, they, and they only see you on laptops. Okay, I get you. I get you. I mean, and laptops are quite small. And we actually don't do that inches. many videos stood next to each other, do we? So everyone oh. thinks I'm tiny. Yeah, because like, we do a lot of videos. Yeah, next to I, each other. I get stops. Oh, you're taller than a four. Yeah, because everyone thinks I'm like five five or something. We need what? to get you a booster, like little yeah, booster. Kind of, a booster seat. Oh, is that all right for the taxes? Yeah, yeah, please. A little step for the lads. Oh, thanks. Right, anyway. One time, me and, Alex did, sorry, one time me and Alex did a video together and he stood on paint cans for the whole video and didn't want to entertain them all. It's embarrassing. Paint cans. That's because he is five foot five. He is five foot seven. The video has stopped panning up. <laughs> anyway, guys, see you in a bit. Martinez is a red. Argentina. Argentina. The butcher has arrived. See you later. <laughs>